Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the 4-7 Podcast. My name is RJ. Uh, I have Mike alongside me. Uh, we welcome you guys to just another live episode of the podcast. Uh, we are joined today um, by some awesome, awesome people. Um, number one, uh, you know, we've been talking about it for a couple of days here, but we have Jerome. <laughs> we have Jerome from Switchfoot. Uh, thank How you. How you guys doing? Hey. Uh, thank you for joining us. We did, you, you'll you notice a third person is here with us today, uh, Pete. Uh, Pete is uh, our Rhode Island super fan of Switchfoot. Um, and so we wanted him to be on the podcast as well. Uh, really, he just wanted to be on it in case we got any historical things wrong about the Switchfoot timeline. Um, right. there you go. So he's here to correct us as we he, go along. He's the, he's the fact checker that we have. He is. He is. <laughs> right. Um, but thank you so much for being a part uh, of our podcast. Um, you are, are joining uh, us at, a, at an awesome time. We just started uh, season two of the podcast. Um, nice. And so we're excited to have you on. But how's things going? Fantastic. You know, nice. We are, uh, I mean, we're, it looks like the, uh, the uh, lockdowns are slowly lifting and, you know, a lot of dreaming and coming up with ideas of how to get music out there to the masses, you know, so we're, we're in an exciting time. Yeah. We're, we're going to get into kind of the last year at some point, because you guys have done some ridiculous things in the past year that have been awesome. <laughs> You've been coming up with new ways to reach your fans. Um, when in a time when a lot of bands I think have really been hurt, um, you know, by the pandemic and, and by that, uh, a lot of businesses, but there, there are a lot of cool bands that are coming up with some really interesting ways to reach their fans. And, and you guys are one of them. So we'll, we'll get into that in a little yes. bit. All right. Um, let's kind of get a little bit into kind of you, um, you know, how, right. how did you get into music in the first place? Um, you know, and, and what, how'd you get your start in music? Um, it was interesting. I mean, I've, I've been in other bands before my mm -hmm. before I was been in Switchfoot, and uh, I mean, um, you know, at a young age, I've you know I've always been into music, and you know, and when an opportunity arises where hey, you want to be in a band, you know, you you kind of jump at it when you're young, you know, and you're like hey, man, it's great to place an instrument in front of people, you know, play in front of people is always exciting, and uh, and that's pretty much how I got in. I mean, I, I partnered with a with one of my buddies, and we we started this band called Mortal. Yes. And uh, we. Uh, Sorry, I, I got excited about that. I love I Mortal. <laughs> yeah, and it, it was an awesome an awesome time. And for me, it's a, a awesome time of learning how to to be in a band and how to make music and to how to go out there and perform your music. And I mean, I learned so much being in that band. Nice. Awesome. Uh, where did you grow up? And, and how, you know, who were you listening to, you know, as you were growing up in music? Well, I mean, like, I grew up in Southern California. Uh, and, uh, you know, music, I, I've always, my, my, my grandparents uh, were, uh, one of my grandparents was a musician back in the Philippines. And he, he would like, he, he was one of those musicians that would like, uh, be a backup musician for a, like a uh, a big star, a big musician coming in to the islands, um, and he, you know, he performed. He did backup keyboards for bands like people like Elvis and Benny wow. Benny Goodman, and and so we. I mean, there's a a musical lineage, you know, in my family, and um, and one, and my one of my grandfathers actually was my piano teacher, and so I mean he they they literally instilled in me like hey you know you, music it could be your thing, and I I've always had interest in it, and so that's how I got started. Nice. So growing up was faith also a part of your childhood, or did that come later? Yeah. No. Uh, my my direct grandfather was a pastor, and uh, we you know my parents. Were missionaries in the Philippines, and uh, and so yeah, faith was a big, big part of you know my life growing up, and uh, and the the crazy thing is, you know, my parents were very open about me listening to all different sorts of music. You know, like when you when you grow up in a in a faith based home, sometimes you know there's these limits of what type of music you can listen to. But my 
unfortunately, my parents were said, you know, I want you to explore, you know, you know, the music that is out there, you know, whether it's Christian or not. And so, you know, that's where I started. I was able to like listen to um, bands like the Beatles or Led Zeppelin and Queen and and you know, I had a variety of, of you know, um, scope to like the type of music that's out there. So I'm, I was very fortunate, you know. Now, uh, I want to get into uh, uh, what Mike is most excited about right now. So when we, when we first heard you were coming on the podcast, I was like, oh, awesome. We have Switchfoot. And Mike was like, no, we have Mortal uh, yeah. coming on the podcast. So <laughs> yes, Mike, Mike. Why, don't, why don't you get into some of the, uh, the earlier stuff, Mike? Yeah. Listen. I was introduced to Mortal back in 19, was it, 93, um, when you had your split EP. No, you had your EP on Intense Records. Um, okay. Yeah, seriously, my favorite song ever is One Tree Hill. Fantastic song. And um, that's a cover of the U2 song. Is it? Yes. Right. Like, yes that's a right. cover of a U2 song. And what I love about Mortal it was revolutionary because there was not many, even today, there's there's no band like Mortal back in the day. There's no electronic yeah. hard rock bands back in the day. You guys were literally revolutionary and you guys released a ton <laughs> of records. Did you yes. guys? So your bandmate, now I'm going to totally mess up his name. Gyro Yan. Chan. Chan, see? Yeah. Pete, Pete told me the wrong one. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> I told him the right first name. <laughs> <laughs> no, call me out. We tell said me, don't use the last name. Tell me how <laughs> Mortal got involved. Because Mortal right. went from Mortal to Full Zendura, then Gyro had um Juggernauts, and then you had yeah. the, the reunion record on Tooth and Nail. How did Mortal actually come about? Because you guys were so revolutionary in music. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's it's one of those things. Uh, Gyro and I grew up, uh, our parents were were friends back in the Philippines. And so I, John and I were like, you know, childhood buddies, you know, I, uh, I knew him pretty much my whole life, but, uh, you know, come, uh, come around, you know, college where our musical interests started speaking and we're like, Hey, you know, um, let's form a band together, you know, and uh, what kind of music should we play? And, and, um, well, ob obviously, we're very like, you know, musically are, it's very diverse because we love like bands like the Beatles and bands like, you know, uh, U2 or, um, you know, a, a very diverse. And we're like, well, you know, I mean, we can't, we can't just play all these different styles, you know, it, it, it would just be so much to, yeah. so we just decided, you know, hey, you know, we enjoy, uh, you know, we enjoy a lot of electronic music. We enjoy a lot of um, hard rock music. Mm -hmm. We enjoy a lot of uh, industrial music, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, why don't we combine it and see what ha where it goes. And a couple, in we've had a couple influences like bands like Nine Inch Nails or uh, bands like Skinny Puppy or, you know, they, it's really heavy, heavy industrial type bands but they do ha pull a spin on it. Like we, we bring in a lot of mel melody into, into a lot of the music, you know, because, because of the type of music that we grew up in. And that's probably, you know, uh, Mortal ha is, a, is, is an aspect of that type of influence that we've had growing up. Yeah, so you released eight albums on Intense Records. And then you went from there to Folds Endura. Now, yes. Folds Endura, was basically mortal with the new drummer from I think it was um, Redline I believe is that was that correct? Yes, Frank Lenz. He was in a band called um, oh, what was that band? It was a long time ago. He 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 actually was a he he did a marching band in uh, Disneyland. He was one of those guys that would go down the uh, the you know parade. That's, that's a fun, that's play. a fun fact right there. So here's <laughs> what my question is is like so with the intense records did what was it like did they hold on to that name mortal is that what it was and that's why you guys went to full zender Yeah, to we um we couldn't you know uh, technically keep the name mortal and so we're like well you know and it, it was one of those things where you know our musical um, our musical say started changing and you know the kind of music that we want to make you know started to change and so mm -hmm. we decided hey why don't we just you know make a different band you know that mm -hmm. is 
that would be more like the type of the name would be more like the type of music that you're playing. Well, I'll you tell know? you something. When you are when you are on intense records, I'm not sure if you realized at the time, but you guys had some legendary bands. You had Tourniquet, you had Mortal on there, you had Mortification, yeah. well, you were Mortal, uh, Mortification, you had poor old Lou. Did you realize the type of legendary bands you were playing with at that time in the type of bands who had such a you know impact on the community yeah uh they yeah yeah tourniquet we we you know we played with them a poor old lou was more like the kind of music that we gravitated to yeah you know because their kind of, their music is a little not as um heavy as tourniquet or mortification <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 you know but i mean you know we we loved we we love the you know being able to meet those guys and being able to like develop friendships with those guys and like wow th this is amazing this this label has a lot of great bands and artists yeah i think it's amazing because uh like I said, even though they had those hardcore bands like Intense Records, Mortification, you know, they had Tourniquet, who actually, they're, they're actually still around today. Uh, but that's a side note. Anyway, but there's <laughs> such a, you know, legendary, and like I said, but you were still hard, but you threw that electronic mix in. And yes. there's only been a couple of bands like naming the Christian music. Like there was Circle of Dust, there was Argyle Park, there was Clay. Yeah, they were great. Yeah. But then you also had Skillet, who, who did a terrible job at doing it? Like terrible job. <laughs> oh no, I haven't no, got them no. on the podcast no. yet, Mike. Uh, you I'm, gotta... a, I'm a huge skillet Sorry, fan. Sorry, let's read it in. I'm a, hu <laughs> I'm a, I'm a huge skillet Here fan. Read it in. Did you know that? Uh, okay, um, John Cooper's first show. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Ever, they opened up for Mortal. Really. In Memphis, yes. yes. I was about to say this. It's That's like, yeah. I, I can't remember though. <laughs> they had a different band name though, but oh, it was pretty much John Cooper, you know, right. performing. And so you know, it was it was awesome. I was like, wow, you know, this is pretty cool. <laughs> now I say that being I'm a huge Skillet fan, but yeah, he's good. But uh, but the word, like, my point was there's not there wasn't many people doing what you guys were doing, and you guys were doing it yeah. very successfully. Oh so, that, wow, thanks. <laughs> so take us to at Folds Endura. You know, Foles and Dura, um, it ends. And once it ended, if I remember correctly, you had a day job, which, and um, John Foreman contacted you as like, hey, do you want to come join Switchfoot? Yes. Yeah. So going back, uh, playing in Folds End, we would play with the band, the Switchfoot. We would, we would like meet each other around the country. And we'd play in different clubs all over the place. And I'll, I'll actually, we played a lot of clubs in um, Southern California. So yeah. I knew we knew I knew the guys. You know, they're they were aw really awesome. And uh, but I never expected them to call me. You know, because they were a three piece, and it didn't sound like they needed a keyboard player. And I actually played bass in yeah. Mortal and Old Zanjura, and they had a bass player. So so yeah. it was. It was actually kind of a shock and a surprise that they would actually call me up. <laughs> nice. Well, I, you know, this is part of why Pete is here. Um, Pete, I think, uh, if you want to talk about it, you were at uh, Jerome's first show. Well, uh, or give or take. Of. Right. Yeah, go ahead, it, it, Actually, it, it was. And uh, I was it in a gym or was it so in a weird... It was uh, it was at venue. Houghton. It was it was it was at least one of your first shows. So it was Houghton College in the fall of two thousand, and it was yes. in this like chapel, and and we had we had stairs and there was no partition. So you go to a show now and there's you know there's the <laughs> partition and John's John just you know going all over the crowd and everything. Well, at this show, it was stairs up to the chapel stage because that's where we had chapel. And essentially, you could walk up, but nobody did because we were all chill. <laughs> and it was a freshman year. Was it like uh, only a couple hundred people there? Or yeah, yeah, it wasn't that, that many. It was like a. <laughs> it, it was a. Yeah, it was probably a couple hundred. It was freshman. I was I was a freshman at that time at Houghton. And so uh, yeah, you uh, going yeah. back. That was in the fall. I joined Switchfoot two thousand, kind of like late summer. So yeah, you're right. That's um, that is right. probably my first actually like weekend with them where they're like, Hey, we're going to do some shows. 
actually, I wasn't even in the band yet. They were just really like, right. I was just this backup, backup keyboard player. Well, I have I have the original poster from that, and you're not even in it. Like, like yeah. let's see if I can actually get there. It's like, can we see that? <laughs> we go. There's the original poster. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so all you know, all these. Uh... Well, he might have just uh, killed himself from the podcast. We can't <laughs> yeah, hear you anymore. He did. he did, but yeah, that that is. I I do remember like Pete. Uh, at that show somehow, you know, his, he, you can't miss you can't, that. You face. can't miss Pete. <laughs> you can't miss that. Face, you know? Well, you know, uh, getting, but getting, I wasn't nervous. <laughs> yeah, getting into the switch foot timeout. Now I know we're not here forever. There's a lot of music to have, so we're not going to do like a album by album thing or anything. Yeah. We really wanted to talk a lot about kind of your experience uh, throughout the years. And, and we'll concentrate a little bit on the last couple of years, but you know, by the time you had gotten in there, they had three albums. Uh, yes. Very, very successful albums, uh, Legend of Chin, New Way to Be Human, and Learning to Breathe. Uh, Learning to Breathe, receiving uh, Grammy nominations, um, A Walk to Remember is the big uh, the big movie starring a good amount of Switchfoot music um, with Only Hope, Dare You to Move. Yeah. Um, but you came in and uh, your first album, to my knowledge, was The Beautiful Letdown. Um, yes, which is probably the first album I got into. Uh, that's when I started listening. Now, I, I'd seen A Walk to Remember. Uh, I, I'd heard some songs, but The Beautiful Letdown uh, ultimately was the major label debut and your debut with the band. So what was it like um, kind of getting into the studio after touring with these guys for a couple of years and really getting into recording with them? Yeah, that was my actually my first time like really seeing how they work together. You know how to, how how they create music, how how each one interacts in a studio setting, and um, it was amazing. It was fast. We recorded that album in two weeks, and so mm -hmm. I remember um, John coming saying, "Hey, we're going to record this new album. Um, where we're, here's some of the so song ideas that I have. You know, we'd love your input in it, and uh, you know, and." And that was it. And then so we we would try to like piece together these songs, and then we we go into studio. Two weeks later, it's it was done. <laughs> nice. So it was really fast, and I I it was like a whirlwind because I, I wasn't really used to recording like that, you know. And mm -hmm. it, but I mean, there was so much things, so much so much happening. I mean, we I never recorded with a, a producer that you know. <laughs> In, in that capacity before I've never recorded, you know, in a studio that grand before. And mm -hmm. so it was all a learning experience for me, you know, that's awesome. Well, your your introduction into the band really changed uh, their sound a bit going into the beautiful letdown. It definitely brought more of a, a synth influence sound, more layers for sure. Um, and it led to uh, five Dove Award nominations, winning four of them, including Artist of the Year that year. Um, you yeah. kind of got into it a little bit. What was that process like, or, or more so, how was it different than when you were recording with Mortal and Fold uh, in comparison to now Switchfoot? Well, for um, Mortal and Fold, it was just me and my friend, my buddy Gyro, and we would just be in a um, in uh, in his room with a keyboard and you know working out material, you know, and then and then we we you know we go into a studio, but it, it's pretty much everything was done mm. pre going in, and so I mean it was that the difference is when when i when we start playing with switch when i started recording with switchfoot you know you're when you're in the studio you, you're they expect you to utilize your talent you know utilize you know all your knowledge to say okay what can you do to bring this song you know what can you do to bring the song to life in the studio go you know and you're like yeah. oh okay <laughs> so so it was sure. a lot of pressure <laughs> Um, some of the things that I really, I really like about the band, not only, you know, obviously album after album has spawned numerous singles, stuff I listen to still to this day. Um, but you guys have a lot of, um, uh, a lot of charity work, uh, throughout the years oh, yeah. as well. Um, you yeah. guys have, have done things with Habitat for Humanity. Uh, you've yeah. done things with, uh, To Write Love on Our Arms. Um, a, a number of others. Um, and now you also have uh, Broam, which I think was since 2005. Um, yeah. So you guys have been in charity work pretty so, much the entirety 
um, uh, you know, what are some of the organizations that you like to be a part of that or have been special to you over the years? Well, I mean, the, um, I, I can't say enough about the, the organ when we may, we, when we introduced the, the bro am, you know, like, uh, we, we wanted to do something for our, the city that we're from and like, we wanted to give back somehow. And we've, you, you know, we've been like, the couple of years prior, we're like, man, you know, this this city has, you know, a, such a big problem in, in the homeless situation. You know, we got we got to figure out how to how to like help out, and and it took us a while to try to figure that out, you know. And we're like, hey, let's let's just do ground basic, and let's just see, you know, maybe do a concert on the beach and see where it would go, you know, and raise funds for it, and it just grew you know like yeah. it just grew exponentially pete you've been you've been to the bro yes. you know i have so it, it's it's crazy because when i went was back uh with with my buddy nate kate and all and and marcy and kim so back then we were there at the very beginning yes and it was like small you know small we had a little charity event at a guy's house that's and right then Right. And then oh. overlook it. Well, I think that was probably two or three years in. I came, I was there in 2006 or 2009, one of those. Yeah. So it was, it was yeah. just starting to get big. And now I look at it live stream and I know that, that uh, the others have been since I haven't been since, unfortunately, but uh, it's huge now. I mean, it's huge. What, what we, yeah. we are really fortunate because we did partner up with a lot of um, uh, companies in San Diego to help the, the homeless situation over there in that city. And uh, it, it, it was like, um, it means a lot to us, you know, yeah. trying to give back to the city that we're from. And so, and the, the Bro-Am is one of the, one of the things dear to us, you know, that we really want to do. Right. So uh, getting into a little bit oh, behind the scenes yeah, of if, that, if, if nobody's been there, you know, what, um, was that always something that Switchfoot, since you've been there at least, have wanted to do? You know, have you always wanted to kind of uh, get involved in the charity uh, events, or did that come a little later in the years? No, no. That uh, from day one, we've always talked about, hey, you know, if we get to up, if we're able to, we want to be able to give back. You know, if we're right. able to, it's always been because you know you're starting out, you're like, man, we we're in the hole. You know, we're losing money playing all these shows you know and mm. and a lot of times back then you just we just couldn't do it but slowly you know slowly they're like hey here's a few dollars let if we're able to let's let's just do it you know uh we'll we'll put all our effort into it and so nice. it's been uh, it's been like that since day one yeah that's awesome. Yeah, yeah it, it's been cool kind of uh, in doing some of the research behind the scenes before the episode, just kind of seeing how much you guys are actually, you know, doing outside of music, too. I mean, it's it's awesome. Um, and music, you've put out a ton. I mean, you yes. had the beautiful letdown. You had nothing is sound. <laughs> oh, gravity. Hello, hurricane. Vice versus yeah. fading west. Where the light shines through. Um, and, and we could honestly <laughs> talk probably for hours um on, on all of those albums it's a lot um, of songs there are it is <laughs> it is um yeah. and john and john doesn't remember half of them so. <laughs> <laughs> well i mean it's, how many songs it, no i know I, I can't even fathom like him right. remembering all those lyrics <laughs> i know he he the fun thing about john is he gives himself you know it's it's basically become a joke within the live streams is how he can't you know remember the songs and i i'm like he doesn't give himself an enough credit yeah. because so many songs <laughs> yeah well, he he's good he he'll he's good you know he'll remember yeah. most of it and that's all you could ask for yeah. if you can remember and, and, most of it and it's amazing that, that you know you can remember just to play all the all the songs I, that's that, that always that's some, amazes me yeah. <laughs> well you know again we could we could get into each and every one of those but um, you know, the last couple of years, um, you know, you came out with Native Tongue uh, back in uh, 18 or 19 um, yes. through Fantasy Records. Um, and I think you did a tour right before kind of the, the pandemic hit. Um, you know, so can you talk a little bit about what's the what, what's been the difference, uh, if there are any, uh, in Switchfoot uh, from when you first joined to your latest album? Are there things that you guys have grown in or are there things that are are uh, quote unquote, in a better place now than, than day one. 
Yeah, we um, before I when when I joined them, uh, we we grew in um, you know the more uh, people have heard of us, you know the more you know access that we're able to play in front of more people. You know, uh, we did tour for that native tongue thing. We uh, we were able to like um, open up some shows with a band you might know, Bon Jovi, <laughs> out of Europe. That's and, right. Uh, Probably the probably one of the biggest shows that we've ever played in front of you know the people you know it was so yeah being one of the biggest the the big difference is we were able to gather up enough funds to build our own studio yeah. in San Diego and so with that we're able to like go into the studio and create uh it you know create exponentially you know in songs to the way we want to hear it, you know, yeah. in, instead of going into a studio, another studio somewhere where we don't know, we're not comfortable. We're not, you know, we're not, we we're not familiar with it, with all the right. equipment there. And so having your own studio is such a game changer. You know? So Jerome, you guys have been around for over 25 years and when Switchfoot first started, they were, they were on a Christian label. Now you went to Columbia records. How has, the mission of Switchfoot evolved over the years. Uh, do you, are you guys still can do you guys consider yourself still a Christian band on a ministry to serve Christ through your words and your music and your actions? Or because I'm not saying anything's right or wrong, but is it more yeah. uh, like what 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 is your mission as a band? Or personally, what is your mission being in Switchfoot? Well, I mean, like uh, since the very beginning, since I joined them, um, there are our vision has really not changed much. Sure. We we want to make honest music for, you know, people that will listen, honest people sure. in it, whether it's Christians or not, you mm -hmm. know? And we want people to, to um, uh, go through this journey with us, whether you're a Christian or not, you sure. know, like the struggles that, you know, anyone's going through. And, um, and that hasn't right. changed since the, you know, um the the platforms changed i mean we played you know again i was telling you we, we played uh for an audience of like a band of in front of bon jovi's audience mm -hmm. you know but then we've played in front of you know um you know uh, a christian band you know right. like like skillet or sure. uh, you know and those kinds of and we we don't we never really change the the projection or the message it's you know we this is us we 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 play as on you know music we pour our, our heart and soul and honesty into each song and sure. you know that's and you know and obviously you're gonna get pushback we've had a lot you know we've had i think the westboro baptist church yeah you know <laughs> they, push, uh, they, well, they push back everybody that's yeah that, that's yeah, actually so, that's a that's awesome to hear that you are uh, on their bad side that's uh, <laughs> yeah, not yeah, many people were, that's we're when you know. Thing. That's when you know you've made it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then the great thing is, you know, John comes out there and gives each one bottle of water because yeah. it was a hot day. Right. And right. you're like, man, you know, it may, you know, this, it may not do anything, but hey, here, we're, you're being honest. We're being honest. You know, let's. <laughs> right. I guess I, uh, this is where we're uh, at. It, we got we got a question from the um, audience and the fans here. Is maybe you can answer this from Lee Salgado. When is our spoiler on number twelve coming, Jerome? Oh, so. <laughs> you guys are you guys are diving in hey, deep. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so Jerome, we got a we, we got a bunch of people watching from the uh, the Switchfoot fan group, uh, yeah. the official one. So there's a bunch of folks that'll be watching from that uh, because in honor of. It's what they call 412 day, you know, Switchfoot 412 day. Oh, it's Switchfoot day here. You're right. So <laughs> happy. Right. Yes. I meant to say this at the very beginning, but happy Switchfoot day to you. This is an, this is an honor to have you on Switchfoot day. <laughs> so just to be clear, 412 has nothing to do with 420? No, 412 is the song. <laughs> 412. I just wanted to check. There's a song. Yeah. That, see, we see. There's a song called 412. Yeah, we, uh, we had a song called 412 yeah. where John woke up at 412 a.m. Right. For a, a long period of time, just randomly. And he just decided to write a song about it. You know? Nice. And, you know, and so every 412, right. so it, every April 12th, yes. these, these guys, you know, 
<laughs> Actually, if we had a show today, we'd have probably play that song. <laughs> and go play it by yourself. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, back to the quote. What is what is the spoiler on number twelve? Spoiler number twelve is the twelfth, the the upcoming album. We've nice. we, we're, we're record we recorded this the new album. It's still in you know in the rec- you know finishing up phases, but um, it's it's coming and it you know it's gonna be pretty cool. I I I think this is my most challenging album that I yeah. ever so I ever did worked on with Switchfoot, and I, we've worked in a lot of albums. You got but one more- this is. My actually, my 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 buddy Nate Jacoby's asking if we're going to hear some more melodica from you on this album. Oh, because you guys, <laughs> the, I mean, the, the melodica was only for this the album "Beautiful Letdown." Okay, you know, all right. Well, I was that was he, that he, was only he, done for that. I had to get I'm a Jacoby in there. You know, I had to get <laughs> J- a Jacoby question in there, and you know, <laughs> yeah. Rhonda wants to know if you personally have written any music during the past year. Um, this past year, I have not. I mean, I've written music for the for Switchfoot, you know, but uh, personally, uh, I mean, that would be personal, right? That's, you know, yeah, Switchfoot yeah, is yeah, my yeah. band, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's personal, right? So, <laughs> so, so you mentioned before playing the different kinds of shows, um, you know, whether it be in front of kind of a Christian crowd or in front of uh, Bon Jovi. Um, you know, I, I actually saw you um, finally. I had been a fan since Beautiful Letdown. I didn't get to see you guys until Creation Fest in Ooh. Pennsylvania. I think yeah. it was 2009 or 10, that area. Um, but my claim to fame is I was at the general store of Creation Fest, which they, you can go get your drinks and stuff. And you guys were walking out, and I got a picture <laughs> with John with my baby. Uh, I had brought no, my man. 11-month-old kid. So my 11-month-old, her claim to fame is she has a picture with John at Creation Fest. Uh, in Pennsylvania, you, so. you still have it? Like I do. Yeah, I wish I could bring it up right awesome. now, but I don't. I didn't. I didn't prepare. But um, but yeah, it was it was a show. I think John was climbing the Creation Fest stage. Yeah, um, he climbs and, a lot. And, yeah, it was a ridiculous concert. <laughs> a um, I went for three years to Creation Fest. It was a great great place. But um, but this past couple of years here um have been a whirlwind uh, for everybody. Um, in spring of 2020, you guys came out with a covers uh, EP um, yeah. wh- where you guys covered some really cool songs from Frank Ocean, uh, Chainsmokers, The Verb, John Bellion. I was very surprised yes. to see uh, John Bellion uh, on that. He, uh, he's one of my favorites. But um, yeah, he actually like uh, he texted us. Uh, we were on a sh- we were doing we were on the road, and he he texted us because he heard the song, and he he him and his wife literally were in tears. They said. You know, we were crying listening to this song that you guys made that we wrote. (laughs) It was awesome. It was really cool. I was like, wow, that's awesome. (laughs) So let's start with like Switchfoot during the pandemic. And then we could talk a little bit about you too. You know, what, when you guys heard that shows were getting canceled, um, you know, when did the idea start flowing around to start doing these live stream shows and things like that? Were you guys nervous in the beginning when, when things started getting canceled? Yeah, I mean, we I, we had a big tour. Uh, we were getting ready for a big tour with, um, with um, Nickelback and and Stone Temple Pilots. Oh, okay, for that, nice. you know, like in a couple months, mm. and uh, we had to cancel that. And we're like, well, you know, we we were a little bit uh, in the you know in the gray area, like, oh, you know, what what's going to happen? And no one knew what was going to happen, and. And when the, our booking agents were like, "Yeah, we're we're canceling everything for the rest of the year," and this is in March and April, we're, there's there's not going to be any shows for the rest of the year. You're like, "Whoa," you know. <laughs> uh, the first thing actually that came up was you know the Broam because that was in a couple months, and we're like, "Man, you know, we can't, we wouldn't be able to do the Broam." That that was devastating in itself mm-hmm. because that's a big part of who we are. And and then after that, and so yeah, there was a little bit of a gray cloud, you know, in the Switchfoot camp, you know, when everything started happening. <laughs> so when did you guys too. first start talking about what else can we do if shows are canceled? You know, who, how did that come about where you started thinking of some new ideas? Well, we, um, we, we started discussing like intensely, like, Hey, how can we connect with people? You know, that's, that's who we are. We're as, as a band is we need, we need to be able to connect with, you know, the people that we're playing music with and and you know you 
we start off small, you know, we, we do these little small Zoom, uh, these the Zoom little cons, you know, uh, songs, you know, we would record a Zoom thing with songs, you know, and, and then it, that kind of evolved, you know, like, hey, you know, we have, you know, we have a studio in, back home, let's utilize it. And so um, we decided to, um, you know, once a month, try to see if we can do a live stream, you know, of us playing live music, you know, in, in, in whatever capacity we can with what we have, you know, we have a camera, great, let's, let's, let's film us, you know, we have, you know, instruments, let's just film us with instruments playing live music. And so it evolved like that, you know, and, um, and <laughs> it starts getting a little bit more crazy every month, like, <laughs> hey, what, what can we do to, uh, to uh, up what we did last month, you know, what can we do to up this month, you know, and yeah, uh, it gets more did... far fetched as we go along, and so, <laughs> so I'm kind of afraid. So how did the <laughs> so 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 this is the, the I just saw it released about an hour ago. So first we had the balloon. First of all, how did that come about? That we were doing a switch from the balloon because you go from if for those that may not have seen the last tour, there, there's some story time and there's this, you know, in the second act, there's this big balloon in the background. And it was just cool for me to see going from the balloon in the background to actually being in a balloon. I mean, that yeah, was well, one of the scariest things in my life. Have you guys ever been in a balloon? It, you're no. in a, um, yeah, once. <laughs> uh, a 10 by six wicker basket <laughs> and a balloon right. 3,500 feet in the air. Oh my <laughs> gosh! Let me tell you something. I am so scared of heights. Uh, me, us too. Listen, no, not, I don't know about the other guys. Me, I was. Not, 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 not to be gross, but I would have pooped my pants after being that tall, far up there. Like I was at a wedding this afternoon, when this past weekend, and it was a twenty foot drop, twenty Whoa. feet, just twenty feet. I was scared as heck. <laughs> oh, oh, Thirty five hundred feet up, no stinking way. So, Jerome, so, who's to blame for this? Yeah. <laughs> we were to blame because you know we we get our, we we start around the table like hey what do you want to do and you know, you know yeah. someone someone shouts out you know hot air weather balloon and it kind of <laughs> goes in there and you're like i don't know and, and someone goes we can do it you know yeah. and and then it evolves and <laughs> you know. well you have one up to my other my other favorite uh musician is uh damian rice and he did oh, a I live like he did a, yeah he did a stream from a sailboat he and he literally sailed from from place to place playing new songs and stuff and then i heard you guys went on a hot air balloon i don't know what's next if you're gonna do like the space <laughs> hotel uh in a couple of years but and, and um, it wasn't just five guys in a in a, in a balloon no I mean, they had 10 what was it I think it was I counted... uh, it it was eight like okay, you have yeah. to have the driver there, right? Because someone has to navigate the balloon. And Frosty <laughs> and Sawyer and, and the camera yeah. guy and then the yeah. audio guy. I mean, you get you know we're crammed into this thing. Wait, you guys down. are all in was, one. Was one. Ryan up there too? Was Ryan no, up there too? No, no. there was only we had. <laughs> did yeah, you guys? Had, did you guys at least have like a parachute or something? No, no, no. Was just, that was no. it. No, was it. And, we, I mean, let, uh, let me tell you, like lifting and landing were like. It was pretty it was, brutal. It was it's fun brutal. to watch. <laughs> Holy crap. So uh, yeah. one of the other things I noticed over the last year or so, another another good idea, probably a better idea than the hot air balloon, was your drive-in show. Um, not oh, a lot yeah. of bands had done that. Uh, I right. did see a couple others over time, but I think you were the first that I seen during the pandemic that thought of this idea. What was that experience like playing for cars instead of fans standing well, there? You, you have to get past the fact that if, someone's honking at you they're not mad at you, you know? <laughs> or you need to turn your turn you know uh, to the side or something you know you got to get that out of your head you know right but uh again that was one of the first times we played as a live band in front of people during the pandemic mm -hmm. one of the first times and so it was thrilling to play in front of people whether it's cars but again it's it's cars right yeah. <laughs> right right you know, I mean, there's people in the cars, which is awesome, but it, it the connection is it's a little bit more of a stretch. You gotta really push to get this to connect with people. Hey, right. Jerome, you know? I got a fun question for you from Lisa Jones. She goes, "What's your favorite thing a fans ever sent you?" A favorite thing? Well, okay, so the live streams, 
people have been sending us these espresso beans and we eat it. We eat it during the live <laughs> stream. Yeah. Yes. And yes. We, we <laughs> gobble those things up and uh, I, that could be up there. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Now you guys have done a lot of other stuff during this year too. We had, you know, uh, the stadium show from Petco Park uh, in January, I think. Uh, the yeah. beautiful letdown uh, live yes. stream in February. So you guys have been busy. It's been a busy year because yeah. you started and recording. You know I I, can, I don't think I can say it right now, but the next hmm. few ones are going to be pretty. Oh, you come on, Romy. Listen, give you me can, something. Listen, <laughs> you can say it. good. You can say it. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, maybe not legally, I mean, I, but you could. I won't it. tell the rest of them. Don't you know? <laughs> I, I know, I know. We won't. We won't. I tell. Mean, we're in a safe so, place here, right? Right. Not right. Right. <laughs> Wait, you're in California, right? So, so my yeah, this is a safe. Place. That's a safe place. <laughs> right. So my 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 dad, my Romy, and the guys know my father. He he oh, was yeah, asking. Awesome. Oh yeah. So so my dad always comes up with some interesting questions and. Uh, it was very interesting for for me to hear at the very beginning, were, you know, influenced by Elvis and influenced by all these bands. Because I I come from a similar background where I came from a Christian home, but we were open to any kind of band and just listen. Yeah, to that's music. that's great. That's great. so so he's asking if if what if we're going to see any of that sort of influence on album twelve and you know it, it, well besides <laughs> they're, the melodic, they're really digging in now they're and I, mean, I well I have to as a super <laughs> fan that's been over to over eighty shows or more I don't even know now I I lost count I have to ask while I have the platform is there anything at all that you can give us um, well I I do remember <laughs> in the studio us listening to uh, David Bowie and then going in and recording okay. something so. You know, I don't know if that yeah. that will make okay. it in there. I don't know. Yeah. I will. I will take. I will take it. It's a nugget. You heard it here first. I got you that exclusive, gentlemen. No. So I want to transition a little bit into or away from Switchfoot and into kind of just you personally. Hold so on. I know we. I, I, do have, I do have one question, real quick. So Jerome, like yes. with this new album here, what is the theme? What is the theme of the uh, message you're getting with this new album here? Um. Okay. Just think of it this way. Um, we recorded this during the most chaotic time in our, the history of this country. We were recorded during our, the election mm. period where yeah. it, it was, you know, it, it was massively, there's fighting and both ends and, you know, it, it unrest and, and it was, that was in our heads going in, you know, this, this idea of, man, there's so much chaos. There's so much fighting. There's, there's so much division, you know, what, 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 what can come out of this type of a, what kind of, what could come out of us to say something about this, you know? Mm. And so, mm. yeah, that, I mean, that you, you look at that time and, and you look at the time when we were recording and you're like, oh yeah, of course, you know, those are the songs that come out. Sweet. You know? So uh, a little bit about you personally. So outside of Switchfoot, um, what's your family like? I know, I think you're married and you, you have some kids. Uh, what's your family yeah. like life? And how do you balance that with the band uh, and, and things like that? Um, well, before the pandemic, uh, it was, um, I, I mean, I, I, I enjoy being with my family uh, probably more than going on tour <laughs> you know, or being away. Uh, and uh, I was able to bring my family to Europe. It, I mean, experiencing, you know, things that are uh, switch related and my family get to participate in it is amazing, like traveling and right. um, you know, being able to go to all these places. Uh, and I mean, we, w I have two boys and uh, they're very, involved in in their own activities like my 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 oldest is into basketball and my youngest is into you know soccer and so and so i'm i'm the soccer mom or the soccer dad you know i have i take these guys to to the games you know? do they do, uh, do your kids understand who you are <laughs> yeah that, does actually make, does this no you know what i mean do they understand that you're in a great rock band <laughs> I, well, I hope so. Actually, my my oldest son is actually the face of native tongue. He's he's yes, the guy he the, in native tongue. That's my son. Nice. <laughs> nice. Have you yeah. introduced them to mortal yet? 
Yes. And uh, awesome. they just tune it out. They they can't what? fathom it. Come on. Yeah, I know. I well, I mean, I <laughs> well, I actually try to like uh, my my wife. I mean, I I was already uh, I I wasn't married when I when I wrote all the mortal and yeah, old yeah, band yeah. songs. And so, um, my wife trying to listen to that is interesting. You know, she was just, she just looks at me and goes, <laughs> "Really." <laughs> that, you you did that and i'm like yeah yeah that's why i been like yeah right that's right i did that that's why i've been like yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's right, right. Thanks, i did michael. that <laughs> thanks michael <laughs> so uh you know we got a couple more things you, you, you didn't well, apparently you, you didn't marry her for her musical taste so that's fine no but she's she's awesome <laughs> She, she, yes. she, she loves, you know, she loves the things that I do. They like yeah. switch, but she, she, she really that's loves a, that. That's thing. awesome. And very talented well, photographer as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I got a couple, a couple more things before we kind of call it, uh, call it a night again. Thank you oh, so much. And thank you to man. all the fans that have been listening. Uh, we've, we've had probably the most on. live viewers that we've had, uh, <laughs> ever for our podcast. So thank you. That's great. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is- We've had a lot of excitement over having you on, so it's been really good. But we got a couple more things to get into uh, in the last couple of years here. Um, I want to kind of get into um, maybe a, a little bit of a downer, and, and then and then back up. Oh. Um, you over the last couple of years, uh, you've you've dealt with cancer. Um, uh, wow. can, uh, can you dive a little bit into that? How did you get the news of that, and how did the band react? Um, you know, when you when you found that out. Um. I well, yeah. It was, it it was a a, a dark time. I mean, it it, it just kind of like the, the doctor just threw it out at you, like, hey, you know, uh, I think we need to talk. And it's never a good thing when the doctor <laughs> the doctor calls you and says, Gosh. hey, we I think we need to talk, you know. Mm. And um, so uh, when when um, I mean, I I've been fairly healthy my whole life. And so, and I never really, I, I don't, you know, I've never really gotten sick to that capacity before. And so when the doctor says, Hey, this is what you have. Uh, and we need to, we need to try to figure out how to, to deal with it. It's, it's pretty, uh, life altering. Mm. <laughs> you're like, you know, everything in your head, you're like, man, you know, uh, uh, this, this could be, <laughs> this could be it for me, you know, mm. I'm like, Whoa. And so, um, when I t- went and told the guys, the guys, I, you know, at I, at first when you first spew out, hey, this is what I have. I I don't know if they th- they thought I was joking or you know like yeah, you're serious. Are you serious? You know, mm-hmm. I mean it, it, it's something that out of left field. You're like, hey, you know, this is what you have. But when when I mean, and then after a while, they're they're very um very very like concerned very supportive because i do remember you know i said hey i I can't participate in a few of the things that switch was going to be doing because i have to go you know do all these tests and you know uh the moment i told them um i have this to the my surgery you know they would call me every day i mean maybe too much they called me too much but (laughs) they would call me every day and say hey how you doing what can we do? You know, you know, is there anything that we you want us to do? We'll, we'll pray for you right now if you want to, and you know that every day, all, uh, almost annoyingly, you know. <laughs> and um, but uh, you know, they were so supportive, and I did I did miss a couple shows. I did miss like a few shows. And Michael, you'd be happy to know that my buddy Gyro yes. actually what filled I'm in for me. About. That's what I'm talking you know, about. Is, <laughs> He was able to come because, okay, he, I, I would have to say he, uh, me and him had the same kind of musical yeah. ability. Yeah. You know, we, we play all the you know keyboards and guitars and all that. He's probably two not, times better than me in that. I was going to say not as good, not as good as no, you. No, he was, he's <laughs> way better than me. I, I don't even know how uh, John decides to ask me instead of Gyro. Which you know, <laughs> but uh, he he came in and he covered for me. But yeah, um, I, I'm very fortunate because it um, the surgery uh, took care of 
That's awesome. The sickness, mm -hmm. you know, and not a lot of people, it, it would happen to a lot of people. So I, I'm grateful and I'm thankful. And it's, you know, uh, I, I don't take life as lightly, you know, I, mm. I, I take in more and, um, but I understand that, you know, it, there, there's an end, there's an end time. And yeah, <laughs> Jerome, I want, can you walk me through your faith process at this time? You know, everyone says they believe in God. Everyone says they love God. Everyone says I would die for this or whatever. But when you're literally possibly at death's door, what yeah. is your faith at this time? What, and if you don't want to answer it, I, I would totally understand. But just curious, what no, is your faith um, at this point? Well, uh, uh, your your mind goes in di different directions, you know. And uh, the first thing is your family. You're like, man, I uh, uh, my is my family going to be okay if I'm gone? You know, yeah. that's the first thing. Um, but I do remember when I first heard the news, and then I left the doctor's office. Where I, I mean, you know, I, I, you know, you break down. I broke down. And you're like, man, you know, this this is not this is not a good situation. Yeah. And, uh, um, it, uh, you, you know, it, it's kind of cliche, but there are uh, a lot of songs that we wrote popped up in my head. Yeah. You know, yeah. like a lot of the We're things, along. yeah, <laughs> a lot of things pop up in, in your, you, you, you kind of find comfort in it in a sense that you're like, Oh, you know, I, I have talked about these types of situations, not to me, but to, you know, thousands of other people, you know, and so you try to, you take that in and I, God actually, I never questioned the idea that there isn't a God, yeah. you know, they never, never, you know, left my mind. And it's like, no, this is, there is a God and, and this, and, but then there's this, and that's where you, you try to like yeah. figure out the things that are in between. Do you, you feel know? like it, brought you closer to God or made you kind of pushed you away a little bit? Like how describe that know, process. Um, it didn't, I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, yes, it, it, it gave you a new perspective of how yeah. God works in your yep. life. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you know, um, I, I, for me, my faith is very important and I've Absolutely. been, you know, like this for my whole life, you know, I, you know, I always emphasize, you know, the idea that, um, the God, God has a plan for me and, mm -hmm. and God loves me in s to such a capacity. And so, you know, when this, these things happen, it, it's not that, you know, I, it's not that I don't, you know, my faith is lessened. It's sure. that the fact that, Oh no, um, this is something that, um, God has, um, you know, foretold that like you're yep. going to go through these kinds sure. of things. And, um, and, and you lean on him a little bit more, you yeah. know, you lean on that, those promises a little bit more, but it, you know, it's, it's not that you're losing your faith. You just yeah. like, Oh, you know, mm -hmm. it, yeah. it, it's not happy, but you're like, was, you know, this, these are like these struggling yeah. times that you just, you kind of have to lean a little bit more. You know? Yeah. There was, I asked you, the reason I asked this is because like, you know, I had my mother who just passed away this past June and oh, no, no oh. worries. Thank you. But what I, it's funny because I find that when people get to this crossroad, they have either two options. They can either lean on God more or walk away and say, if you loved me enough, you wouldn't do this to me. And, exactly. and I find that when we take the mindset and it looks like that you did, which I really appreciate that, you know, I'm going to lean on God more. People watch how you react to that situation and it actually yeah. helps change their life. Yeah. I, I, after that, when I went back on tour, I, you know, a lot of people came up to me during meeting yeah. groups saying, Hey, you know what you went through? I I'm going through. Yes. You know? And, uh, Right. You know, but I tell you, here, here's the, here's the, I want to be careful because, you know, the outcome can, is not always good. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I agree a hundred percent. And I have to say, you know, you can't, yeah, 
because of this, you're going to get better. I, you know, I, mm. I don't know. It's not in, you know, in, in our right. plan for that, you know, but right. I do, I do believe that because there's something to lean on something and there's a hope to lean on yeah. that could pull you through. Yep. You know? Yeah. Now and you're so, going on over two years. Uh, two years. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and you know, there's a five year period where, they they monitor you yeah. to see if you know because it, it, it could come back you know and so we're I'm still kind of in that thing but uh, yeah there's no there's no cancer so something you just mentioned and something I wanted to mention was um, the fans uh, of Switchfoot uh, are unlike a, a lot of other bands um, you notice know, that Pete you see that uh, yeah <laughs> you know like Pete yeah, yeah that's true um, oh my goodness. they seem to really yeah. have rallied behind you personally. Um, yeah. And then uh, the band as well. Can you kind of describe Switchfoot's relationship with the fans, not only personally with what's been going on over the last two years, but over the last 20 years uh, that you've well, been Well, I feel like they become, you know, like for like Pete, we've, you know, he's, well, it's been over 20, 20 years, you yeah. know, of, of seeing him at our shows. They become like family, you know? So fans, that gets blurred and becomes the F turns into family, you know, and you're, you're like, Oh yeah, they're, they are, you know, it's like going home. You're like, when I go to Pennsylvania and I see Pete at a show or, or you <laughs> RJ, you know, it's like, Hey, we, we've gone home. This is, this is a family reunion, you know? It's so it's, it's it, that, that support that you guys like Pete has given and like all, all these fans is immeasurably like what really drives us. Yeah. Well, and the and the great part that I see as far as we call it the Switch Fam because as you said it's a family. Um it, the great part is, you know, we make we make lifelong friendships by going to shows. Like I met Jared Bam Bam Bamford oh, and, and you know, and all these all these good folks, Nancy that's watching and and Marcy and Kate. Like these folks I wouldn't have met without going to a Switchfoot show or Kim yeah, or any of the or any of the folks. So it's it's very cool to, even if we don't get to chat with you yeah. Or the other guys, we get to see our family. We get to see each other. Oh, I know. So. That's I, I that that brings a lot of joy. <laughs> I mean, right. that's really cool. That's what we want to be. Is we want to come together. You know, that's that's it, Switchfoot's thing. It, it's awesome. been it's been cool to see since. I don't know if you remember this. It's a long time ago, but I I was in the van when you first joined the band, and they were playing get to know you games with you to like <laughs> yeah. asking you questions about your interests you remember and things that? like I do. Well, I don't remember. I don't remember what the answers were. I don't remember. I just <laughs> was laughing to myself that here's this band coming to play Houghton and they're playing get to know you games because you're just, you know, it's your first show. Yeah. So it was, so it's cool to see how that's progressed over the years. And then yeah. to see where we, you know, and then drew joining later on and, and seeing how you guys, you, I mean, it's evident that you guys are friends first and foremost. No, we're very, we're very close. Like, I mean, I didn't think I could get close when I first joined them to this, how close we are as a band, you know, right. the friendships that we are. And, we have so I think it's you know it's been pretty amazing how how it turned out. You know? Sure, that's awesome. Um, you know, looking ahead again, the last couple of years have been uh, a, a really trying time for the music community, but it's also really been a, a time of growth through those live streams, through the internet, through you know online things like this. Um, this coming year, it looks like we're opening back up slowly, um, and and that only brings good news, I think, for shows and and things like that. What yeah. are some awesome things that you're looking forward to this year, um, personally and with Switchfoot? Um, I anything that you're looking forward to? You know, I've, again, um, we we are still planning this the bro am. We're hoping that that will will. Uh, uh, f come through, you know, to be able to do that. Um, yeah, again, that's we w uh, the con connecting with an audience is so important for us as a band. So we are let's totally looking forward to playing live shows in front of people. Yeah, yeah I, I can't wait for for live shows to come back uh, too. I've loved yeah. the live streams for for a number of the bands that I follow. Um, uh, some of the other bands that Disciple um, had a yeah. couple this year. They were on our podcast and. Um, awesome. so that was, that was really cool. Um, so again, you know, I think there's a lot to look forward to this year. I want to thank 
you for taking the time to to oh, hang with I us ain't. for a while and thank I'm you to Pete and your out. busy schedule as well uh to be able to come and come and hang out with us too but um I, you know at, at this rate um oh pete you had something <laughs> well i mean i just I, I was i was actually looking at some of the uh the questions from a few fans that were asking in and so so the question is okay it's the next it, live. Uh, it was just released here about a minute ago, about an hour ago. This wheel of Switchfoot. Now, are we going to be able oh, to win yeah. a car, or <laughs> what? What is what is what is this month looking like for? I mean, I know it, it, uh, if it's got to be a surprise. Well, the wheel of Switchfoot. They're going to have songs, and then you spin it, and then we play it. You know, you know. Hopefully, we know. Oh. Hopefully, we know the songs. That's the other. <laughs> wild card of it is, that's okay could we uh do we even know the songs sure. <laughs> so we'll see what happens <laughs> nice nice um well at this rate again okay, hey thank you to I'll everyone page for, to ask. for joining us uh thank you to all the live viewers that are here today and uh this will also be released uh in the future on youtube and spotify and anywhere else you can get your podcast and awesome. such um if you don't mind staying on after we uh end the broadcast and we'll, sure. we'll kind of end it with you but um, if you're new to us, because uh, we do have a lot of new people uh, signed on, we are the 4-7 Podcast. We have uh, uh, about 10 or so other interviews that we've done over the past couple of months here uh, with bands like A Disciple and uh, a bunch of others I can't think of off the top of my head. Uh, Zana, Loyals, uh, things like that. So uh, thank Cutlass, you to Dogwoods, Cutlass, Dogwood, Token, yeah. <laughs> The Insiders, thank Bada you. Bing, Bada Boom are famous. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> That's good. Uh, Mike, Mike and I uh, have been doing this since November. We actually, this is a product of the pandemic as well. We were both sitting around, uh, you know, every night and just not having a lot to do. And we said, hey, let's reach out to a couple of awesome people, see if they say yes to us. And Spoken, Matt Baird was the first to say yes to us. I and like it just Matt. kept going on from there. He's, yeah, Matt's an awesome dude. dude. Yeah. He's a good dude. Uh, we have enjoyed dude. hearing the stories. And one of the main things we wanted to do with this podcast, and I think we did it today with you, is we didn't want this to be a step-by-step step like you know album by album switchfoot thing we wanted to to know about you in particular and 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 your experiences with switchfoot and have it be jerome with switchfoot in the background rather than yeah. switchfoot thank you um, so and so you know we're going to continue to do that so um thank you very much for joining us thank you guys uh for joining us on the four seven podcast i don't have an awesome outro but thank you for coming and have a good day <laughs> yeah,